Greetings there everyone and welcome back to TNO, of course, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, as we're playing as the uh, I Knights Pact. We're looking pretty good overall. Except minus this little portion of Africa, which we established last time was a little glitched. Um, this episode, we got to take out Burgundy, and we got to start pushing, hmm, say, into the Americas, hopefully. I want to save Japan for last, maybe? Even though, hmm, I don't know, we have enough fuel right now. We'll see how long it currently lasts, though. Because the air takes the most, at 69, nice, 1,000. But this is just like old times, which I read last time, uh, pretty much at the end of the last episode. We're not doing all the focus, it's just because I don't want things to like, explode on us. So if you want to do this again, please go right ahead. So let's move in, see what we can do, and hopefully not die along the way. Just like old times, of course. Um, poverty, we're not going to talk about that. And uh, the Burgundian invasion. After weeks of bitter bluster threats and increasingly worrying troop movements, the unthinkable has occurred. A state of war is broken out between the German Reich and the Burgundian state. Though uh, uh, Himmley's domain is unquestionably the most internationally loathed nation on Earth, Hermann's invasion has sent a shockwave of panic throughout the international channels. The name of the alleged Burgundian nuclear stockpile still remain unaccounted for. Assuming that the allegations are true, this will be the first conflict between nuclear powers in human history, and that could very well be the last. More worrying is the Shadow State, in an extraordinarily rare press release, has vowed to smash a false Reich with whatever it takes to vic claim victory, an ominous threat for the rest of the world, which can only sit and watch as the first hand divisions cross the Burgundian border since the Germans of war. Time to crush our traitors. Oh boy. So there you go. Mutinies are crushed in accordance with eternal and unchanging iron laws. Dying loose ends are other defenses. Our mobile units have been given specific and deliberate orders. Do not, under any circumstances, unless absolutely necessary, engage with Burgundian fortification and defenses. We simply don't have the time to waste throwing ourselves against impregnable forces or positions with a cloud of nuclear death hangs over high our heads while we race for the ultimate victory. Speed must be emphasized and promoted to the point that it is essentially more important than combat in the field. This is how we'll destroy the Aldenstadt. Speed will be paramount in ignoring Burgundian defenses and encircling troop formations. Also, one thing I did want to uh, tell you guys here, uh, they have blood diamonds, which is actually kind of nice. But they have plus 50% attack and defensive core territory, and 25% recruitable population factor, which is honestly a little insane. But we would expect nothing less from these guys. Uh, I could call everybody in. Uh, but we're not going to. Hey, uh, can we even see their divisions? What do they have here? Joseph Francois. Japanese Folly. Ovin stands with the Odenstadt Burgund. Uh, that's very weird, but okay. Reisel. Dunkirchen. Kalen. Of course, then again, it gets me disabled the nukes, but look at this. Reichskommissariat Belgian North Frankreich. Siegfried Müller. Oh, Siegfried Müller. Oh, here. Fantastic. Integrate the lesser lands of Burgundy. Bur Burgundy's Germanization program may have been extremely unethical, but the lesser Burgundy region is all but fully German now. Integration would be swift, but costly. Hey, increased growth for a little bit more debt. I'm okay with that. The GRWI, do we need anything there, really? Um, well, let's see. We'll stop transferring everything, all the nuclear power plants over to Ukraine for now. Let's try to make our own. Beautiful. Not bad. Ah, in answer to the call. Well, with all these focuses bypassed, that took a lot less time than I thought it would happen. If you're about this, please go right ahead. Seriously, what happened to their divisions? Cut the communications lines, of course. Uh, flatten Nord Paris. Empty the rat traps. Around their defenses. And Monstein's lessons, so. That kind of sucks. The bells all bypass already, but, you know, whatever. The Black and Sun, or Black Sun Eclipse. For 20 years. As days have been coming, or perhaps it's been closer to 50, the beginning of feud hardly matters. What matters is this. After all this time, him and Goring has crushed the dreams of Heinrich Himmler, uh, and once and for all. Never again will the Schwarze Sun shine over Germany or anywhere else. Despite possessing nuclear weapons, such as the fear and speed of invasion, that Himmler would never have a chance to deploy them. Let us be final proof that even the most intricate of plotted webs may be dashed by the thunder's beat of the eagle's wings. Fantastic. Well, Fall Rockwell. One of the greatest blunders ever committed by the Reich was its failure to once and for all destroy the decadent American pigs at the end of the last world war. The momentum was on our side, and with the Japanese as our allies, we could have broken them. At last, the late Fuhrer was convinced by defeatists, and lazy incompetent toadies to sign a conditional surrender. Now it falls a Fuhrer Goring, his successor, and every sense of the word at this point to finish the job he began. What makes America a unique case amongst their enemies is a complete utter sep separation from any territory within our sphere, making them quite separate separated from our weapons. That is why the greater plan to limit the eagle will require taking the long route across two continents, in fact. 
um, the conquistadors caught footsteps. It was only around a few centuries ago that all of South America was ruled over by the higher European races. And has ever been since uh, been a Europe, Europe's land by right of conquest. Unfortunately, through the combination of vicious native savages, weak old European officials, or the breakup of old empires, these lands left their master spheres. This unfortunate travesty has traversed the work of great men like Cortes and Pizarro, and has led many to degenerate governments led by men of low blood taking root and entrenching within the region. Or we trace the footsteps of the conquistadors and explorers and bring these nations back under the rightful rulership of their spheres. Only this time, the German nation shall hold their aims, and they will never be let go. We have no surprise, America's no overcoming. We must move quickly. The Black Sand Eclipsed. Hey, that's looking better. That's looking worse. And that's looking worse overall. Not good. Oh well. But when the night shines on all the inhabitants of Europe, the sun always appears in the strangest form it can possess. Desperately seeking rescue, German troops entered off Paris today, killing every SS soldier they could encounter. During this invasion, one could see everything. German soldiers were not used to the horror of this magnitude. The conquest were accompanied by a general outrage, the level of which was exceeded by the Germans several times. During his arrival in the conquered territories, Hitman Goring always emphasized chivalry over the defeated and captured, but this time it was an extremely absurd request, which Hitman Goring himself did not hesitate to trample on. Just let the torture know his destiny. Arriving in Osparis, the central building from which the death came as during the plague, killing one after another, Goring's ships surrounded it. Without mercy, whoever you are, shoot, do not show mercy to those who do not know it. The leader of this attack spoke, and with a wave of his hand established what everyone already knew, Himmler had nowhere else to go. Hemingway Goring appeared. Alone in front of the central building, wanted to see the, from the foreground and grab the neck of the creature who had been ordering this all along. All top SS officials were now trapped and not wanted to be tortured like all those others under them. I want them alive, right? Don't kill them. I want that to happen quite easily, uh, Goring said, watching his, this attack from the street as the platoon slowly silenced their noise. Rushing inside, room after room was vacated until they were surrounded Himmler's office, which uh, shots were fired. What's going on there? Why did the shooting suddenly stop? Goring said nervously, looking out of the windows. After a few minutes, all the soldiers came out punished without a trace of Himmler. What happened? Goring asked briefly. I looked at him hopelessly. The coward decided to commit suicide a moment before he broke into the office. I don't know what else to say. Nothing, soldier. Nothing. It's not your fault that he was always a poor coward hiding behind a chicken farm. In front of the crowd, him and Goring stopped, telling people how happy they are today to have him on the podium, freeing them from the restraint, imposing them by the SS. Goring showed everyone the hanging bodies of all participants in the Burgundian Terror, swaying like a pendulum. In a light wind that brought a slightly lighter form of freedom. The worst is over, the worst is over. Burgundy's finally fallen. Goring saved people from eternal suffering, all according to my plan. Fantastic. Cape Verde launch pad. Prepare for jungle warfare. Reward with Amazon. Colombia. Which we did help out Colombia and Venezuela. But still. Esquibo, Esquibo is ours. King of oil. I gotta get a pipe. I actually do have a pipe just like that. I should get some tobacco sometime. Anyways, um, then I'm also getting down here quickly, quickly, quickly. The Cape Verde launch pad. In an invasion of the Iberian Peninsula, we took possession of the Cape Verde Islands off the coast of the African continent. These islands in particular have long been used as supply and refueling stops. We can co-op the already existing facilities and repurpose them to serve as a major launch pad for the Kriegsmarine and Lupop in the invasion of South Africa. Uh, with its ideal proximity to South America and already developed infrastructure, it will no doubt prove to be a linchpin of our war effort in our coming campaigns. Prepare for jungle warfare. Mes mountain, desert, arctic, all conditions in which a glorious hair has fought and dominated him. And yet there's one biome in which we have precious little combat experience in. The jungle. Jungle's dominated a good deal of both Central and South America. And to prepare our campaigns in these regions, we must make sure our troops are equipped and prepared to handle their terrain and climate. While we in mainland Germany will never develop many techniques for dealing with such situations, we do have available one source that can, albeit not with the best professionalism, teach us. Siegfried Müller, former Reichskommissariat, Central Africa, fled to us after Hutuk's coup and has since done little of actual value. This is his time to actually prove himself to the Reich following his failure to maintain order in Africa. And cut off the reinforcements. As we begin our glorious conquest of the South American continent, we'll no doubt be opposed by our rivals who seek to attack us by proxy and possibly even directly. We must prevent them from reaching our target long enough so that when they do come, we have our attention undivided and can meet them in full force. Our submarines will be given explicit orders to target incoming ships to the regions regardless of affiliation. No guns or men will come to their aid of our enemies while the Kriegsmarine are on duty. If America or Japan complain, we can always tell them that it was an accident and bank on an inversion to starting another world war to hold off full scale intervention for a time. Fall the... Then a day. 
but rather the historical ownership, Colombia and Venezuela are rival domains of the Reich. The colony of Klein Venedig was settled in the 16th century and could have found great success and it could have been a boom for the German people had it not been for the short sighted decision by Emperor Charles V, who, it must be noted, was not wholly German by race. A man with only one German parent would never be given status in a Reich cell. Why should we heed the proclamation of one of from a distant past? Klein Venedig. Benedict shall once more be in possession of Aryan hands, fixing his historical injustice once for all. Yeah, why not? What do we got here? Oh boy. Looking pretty green on everything, except the tact helicopter is pretty normal. And get cast, of course. And everything's updated now. Yay. Well, Amazon. Brazil is the only South American nation that has a chance of actually putting up a significant fight against an invasion, but only if it's able to mobilize. That's why I must quickly and decisively eliminate it. A victory only secured through a protracted campaign through the jungle is a little better than a defeat at that point. The attrition from disease and lack of supply would likely dwarf caught losses in combat by a significant degree, or so Shona has explained. Our main target should be in the region at the mouth of the mighty Amazon in the north, and the states of Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo in the south to effectively wipe out the Brazilian militaries, likely staging areas at once. While we ought to handle our soul with more caution than with its neighbors, we should also not become too timid. We should remember that, after all, we are the world-conquering warriors of Germany. There's no nation too big to fall to our swords. Happy June, everybody. Oh boy. Alright. Where are we at? Cruisers? Cruiser City. Floating harbors, stack subs, semi modern carrier holes, advanced carrier holes, goodbye. Semi moderns would be nice. Oh, we have nothing here. You know what? Start easing those instead. Deck armor, actually. Um, hangar spaces. Just get a crap ton of hangar spaces. Cool. Radar threes, anti-air threes. I mean, these guys are a little better, but still. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. Oops. From that's actually a little better than I thought. So we need to go here. We'll go there. And then from here to there. We should be okay overall. Oh, how are we missing another division here, huh? Go. There you go. For now. Ship wise, what do we got? And naval bases we're gonna throw a craft on there and a craft on there. Continue with the reactors. Oh. Jungle Jaeger. 21 combo with interesting. Let's be artillery, that's not bad. Medivacs, I mean these are nice and all, but I kinda like what we have currently. Soft stack is okay, it's not great. So Battle across the Atlantic. Urging America through the Atlantic Ocean will likely be a daunting task, even for an invincible Kriegsmarine. The American Navy outnumbers us by all intelligence reports, and so we must compensate for what we lack in numbers with Aryan prowess and fearlessness. We should drive into the battle lines with the strength of the lions and speed around their hulks with the energy of the cheetah. Our admirals are more than eager for a rematch, seeking to wipe the blemish of our near defeat on the open seas from our last go around from the record of their prefacious navy. Or cross would also fall to Luffy off of the sink American ships at blinding speeds, but if it keeps the admirals happy than goring, we'll have them let them have the chance. We're going to do that first, just because I want to get make sure our ships get over there. Um, we also have a couple planes here who are not doing very much, so. Mm, where were the other planes? Pretty sure we had other planes here doing something or nothing. There you go. Other ships get have a little more time to get over there. 
Not good. At least better than more growth. That's, that's good. Inflation. More reactors. Good, good, good. Oh, we're about to get uh, better research facilities, which is fantastic. It's only 1977, though, but whatever. Storm the beaches. The upcoming American invasion will likely prove to be the largest amphibious assault in history as we deploy every frontline division we have at our disposal against our enemy. Or we will overwhelm their defenses by striking their coasts at multiple points and drive them inland from there. This will be, for all intents and purposes, an amphibious Operation Barbarossa. Just like Barbarossa, the campaigns will end with total victory for the Reich thanks to the weakness of our foe and our own immense strength and resolve. The Americans believe that size can save them too. Ha! They shall just realize how well that worked for the Slavs. So now you guys are out in the open seas. Doing what you have to. And we're going to be running out of fuel soon. Swarm the skies. It'll be the crowning glory of the Luftwaffe's history, or it'll be if the Fuhrer has any say in the matter. Helicopters, bombers, both tactical and strategic. Fighters and interceptors will all be sent speeding over the Amazon's or American skies in an effort that will make the Blitz of England look like child's play. Whenever they look up, they shall see only the shadows of our planes and the scream of our engines. We've even devised speakers to play the infamous Stuka scream for our helicopters to put fear into the hearts. Um, the USAF will have no chance of even put up a fight before we smash your plane on the runways. Our air fleets shall blot out the sun itself until our battle has been won. That'd be cool. Two months worth of fuel. Not ideal. Hello. And we are landing. We have landed. Oh, and we're saving. July 1st. Fantastic. Secure more Lebensraum. One of the most important missions of the Reich was to expand Lebensraum for the Aryan people. You must expand to all land and grow as a race, as is our right. South America as a region is practically hand tailored to this dream, as it is a large continent that is relatively sparse in its habitation compared to Europe. Who better to tame the wilds of these lands than the Germans without advanced intelligence and technology? In 20 years, we will create a vast colony here that will allow for generations to come to expand and thrive. The only obstacles standing in our way are the existing governments, but they will prove no more durable than any of the foe we face, which is to say, not at all. We'll make new decisions to take even more land for the German people in South America. I think that's a great thing. A fantastic thing. Uh oh. Early tax help, that's alright. The America Bomber. Before the end of the last world war, the Luftwaffe now Fuhrer Hermann Göring sought to develop strategic bombers capable of striking the American homeland from the German air bases. The project had made several strides, but was eventually terminated after it proved unnecessary to win the war. Now the specter of the war with America looms large again, and given that the American mainland is now the primary target, Fuhrer Göring was eager to restart the long dormant project. Collecting data from the past 20 years of aviation developments and combat data, it should now be relatively simple to design a plan that can launch from an airport outside of Brandenburg. Deploy a payload up to, uh, and including nuclear bombs and return home safely. Proposed stealth bombers such as the proposed Horton HXV-3 are also being looted for actual development under the project's mandate. Well, that'd be good to do. What do we got here? Invading South America, invade Chile. Oh. Bolivia, Ecuador, Uruguay, Paraguay, Peru. Oh, okay. Do we... We didn't beat them yet, no. Alright. Anything else here? No? Oh. Of course, the Monroe Doctor. Oh. If we're not completed within 267 days, they have to go to, we have to go to war with them. Crap. We gotta move faster. But once Brazil's done, we can start taking everybody at once, because, uh... 
Our fleets are pretty much ready to do whatever needs to be done, so. Go figure. Review American geography, unlike within Europe. The Reich has never deployed ground forces in the United States territory, and thus our generals are woefully lacking the minute details of its geography. To make sure our forces are properly deployed once a direct invasion begins, we have instituted a crash course of the American terrain to make sure each officer with a sufficient rank is familiarized with the lay of the land. In a fight against another nuclear power, speed is crucial, and so the faster our forces are able to take out key targets, the higher the chance victory will be declared before the nukes begin flying. Of course. Eight nuclear reactors spending $70 million per nuclear reactor per month. We have more than eight nuclear reactors, I guarantee you. Ah, finally! That uh, went down. Oh, well, god dang it, that's nothing. Get to it real fast. Oh, you know what, since we're here. Since they have to unlock or do the mono reduction anyways, we need to go to work too, so. Geography. So we're gonna move pretty fast through all this stuff. Von Spee. Contact the American Deutsche Bund. In the mind of the American public, the image of the Reich is supposed to be the one that is detested and feared. This is no doubt an unfortunate consequence of their bitterness and defeat, but there are some brave enough to fight back against the laws and propaganda. The American Deutsche Bund is a group of sympathizers within the United States. They're small and lack any kind of mitigating support for the most part, however, but it is always a good idea to establish connections with possible allies before rather than after the victory to ensure smooth relations and clear understanding of who stands where. This is why, despite this general lack of faith in their ability to help much, the fears agreed with to see several representatives of this group in Berlin. Perhaps they'll end up surprising him? Yes, no, maybe so. You go in when you can. You will do the same thing, basically. You have all the tanks. You will probably get bogged down in the jungles, but whatever. You will definitely get bogged down in the jungles. And you'll probably get bogged down in the jungles as well because the supply is so bad down here. It is what it is. Happy hunting! Well, Vendig, which we read earlier. Operation von Spee of all the nations of South America. Argentina is the closest ties of the Reich from the side of the cultural and demographics. Many Germans live there and make up a sizable minority along with other European immigrants' descendants. Of course, these lost sons have mingled for far too long with the lower races to ever truly be our equals as pure Aryans, but still, they are relatives at least, and one does not leave their relative out in the cold at night. We shall seize the state and consider integrating it into the Reich once we have purged the filth and blood traitors. It will make a marvelous new home for our veterans to start families in once the great campaign is all over. The Spirit of Anspiel himself watches over us as we sail for Argentinian shores. As part of our ongoing project to control South American contingent, we'll invade Argentina and turn into a naval base against American Japan. That's my first, though. Military of Alting Brazilian. Fantastic. Um, I don't know, here's five more maybe? More production units? <coughs> Alright, we'll use constant commands for some of the stuff, because some of the stuff should all be firing, but, you know, whatever. Fall Vindic, or Viking. The shorter route to the U.S. is through the north, which will have much easier access to through Militaire Verwaltung and Britannien. They compensate for this easy access. We must contend with the fact that we will be put instantly into the war with the U.S. and OFN should we proceed. 
as the only available truck is in the operation of Canada as an OFN member and the U.S. forces in Iceland and Greenland. We should proceed there and therefore think deeply before we commit to the north, or at least wait until more funds have been prepared. On Ireland. Yeah. Operation Ericsson. While small and relatively unpopular, the islands of Iceland and Greenland would prove tantalizing springboards for an invasion of the United States through North Atlantic. Well, close enough to serve as a launch pads, they are far enough away to make American reinforcement impossible should we come in strength. Altogether, a safe bet for their attack, but we have to keep in mind that their small size and remoteness means we will not be able to keep many divisions supplied for long once we attack them without first building up their forts. Of course. And we're out of fuel once again. What else is new? Japanese Folly, the Sam of Venezuela. Whatever. Come on, move faster. Uh, Suriname. Okay, so we definitely have to just go to all these guys individually then. Uh, Uruguay, that's good. Paraguay. And we'll call all these fine folks in, and hopefully see what happens. Atomic free power at the Circuit Circus. You don't do nasty stories? Who the heck are you, Barry Gosh Darn Goldwater? I don't know how to tell you this, but countercultural music focused magazines usually don't get invited to German nuclear power plants. I don't know which poor son Germania got Rolling Stone confused with the New York Times, but I'm not about to call Jolly Old Herman and ask him to revoke a press pass to what might, very might well be the story of the decade. This magazine is less than a decade old, you know that. We don't have big shot Walter Cronkite to send. I know inspecting the subatomic particles in Hamburg isn't the same as dropping acid in dead end mining towns and shouting about Bob Kennedy, but fear and loathing in Duluth made about made both Hunter S. Thompson and Rolling Stone household names. We need you, Hunter. Ralph Gleason, founder and editor of the perpetually erudite Rolling Stone magazine, swam as an amorphous ye yellow flesh being beyond the colored aviators that tightly hung to the face of Hunter Thompson, the firearms enthusiast, and would be sheriff of. Pitkin County, Colorado. Ralph, you see it my way. I write about Valka Gang, Shriek Power, the death of the American Dream. I'm not a journalist. I'm a pseudo-moralist. You don't want me to go to Hamburg. You want me to throw at the MPP primaries. Ship me off to go face-to-face -face with Herr Doctor Physicist, and I'll say the wrong thing to the wrong person. Poof. That goes America's most dearly beloved iconoclast. Don't send the dope fiend Mark Twain and send Bill Hurst. I don't know how many other ways to say it. We don't have a Hurst. We have you, Hunter. Don't... Didn't you say that Michigan International Speedway was what the whole hat world will be doing Saturday night if the Alice had won the war? We'll prove it. Go to Germania, please. Do this for me and Rolling Stone. We'll furnish one story if you choose, no matter no holds barred. No holds barred? That can mean a great deal of things. Return to Aspen, perhaps. Special acts to the White House? That's a tempting offer. Darn it, Ralph, buy me a Lufthansa ticket. But we went ahead and I used decisions, uh, with no checks, uh, to get this done because we have definitely more than at least 20 nuclear power plants, so. We're going to keep shoving them over there. So in this meantime, half a billion. Nice. Well, a lot of deficit. But growth has gone up, which is fantastic. And we're going to war with Paraguay and all of them. And send them to Paraguay. We don't care. Kill yourselves off, please. That'd be nice. Um, where are you guys at? You guys are setting, setting up to invade over there. I'll send you guys down to invade these guys as fast as we possibly can. That'd be good. Send the tanks in. Keeping time. Really, that was the word for this feeling. Evan Gordon released a huge size. He put out the copy of today's Das Reich down on the rich mahogany table taken from some minor European noble. The first story is about German nuclear power. It hit the pages of all the newspapers that have been invited to tour the nu new nuclear power facilities. Though a menagerie of language and grammar, they all express similar ideas. The new generation of nuclear plants were safe, efficient, and expertly run. It was unsurprising that Das Reich would report favorably on this new initiative. Uh, Goring would have had the editor shot and the reporters conscripted if they hadn't, but Das Reich was no longer good enough for much of the young, educated, liberal, goring shitter of the word population. Though means unknown to him, the New York Times was the paper of choice for university students across the Reich, and seeing the pre precious Judeo-Bolshevik rag report favorably on one of the government's new key projects has convinced many of them that, yes, perhaps a few didn't just fall into position by blind luck. It was a shame that the American publication held this much sway over the German people. The idea of that a public opinion, and thus Goring himself, would be beholden to a newspaper from New York City of all places disgusted Goring. The only way he could be worse if his prob that replaced a Volker should buy a Bachter. Even still, he couldn't be too angry at the times after all. They had said exactly what he had hoped they would. The way had been paid for even more nuclear power. The printing press is perhaps more powerful than the atom. Guiana Kayan is ours, thankfully. I always say that name wrong. Go figure.
Even more cruisers. Cruising through. Chile, Bolivia, Ecuador. Uh, we're fishing with Uruguay right now. Uh, what do we have around here? Ah, well, they're dead now, so that's fine with us. Uh, Prussian Ericsson is good. We did that one, you do that one, Von Spee. I say the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal is a true diamond in the rough amongst the malaria ridden jungles and dense forests of South America. In fact, were he were not already planning to create a land front with America through Mexico, the Creek's Marine would have likely have damn near forced us to strike at the canal. By capturing it, we can prevent the sizable U.S. Pacific fleet from joining its Atlantic counterpart anytime soon. To that end, first need to destroy the nation of Panama and prove that it's worth of luck. It's lack of worth in letting another nation own the great strategic position that runs through its very heart. When finally confront America directly, we'll come upon the canal like a tidal wave and push aside any opposition no matter how fierce. Um, what is this one next? 35 days, not bad. There you go. They're in the dead. Very good. We don't care. Beautiful month to video. Oops, September 10th. Oh, we got him. Beautiful. Military of Alton. Feuerland, Johannes Steinhoff, and Wolf. Sehr gut, sehr gut, sehr gut. There you go. That's going to take some time. Suriname, Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia. Uh, where are you at? Yeah, come to Bolivia next. Where you have launched, very good. Iceland and Reykjavik. Good, good, good. 10 billion, that's better. And 1%. Awesome. And you're in. And Feuerland. New land, just for us. Bashapol, yes, please. Any more things to build? Uh, I guess we built some more ports. Here, go up by five, maybe. Some more city stuff, I suppose. We could always use military factories. Uh, more attack helicopters would be fantastic. Transport helicopters looking finally very good. Thank God. Inflation's a little higher, which is not good, but whatever. Chile, Bolivia. Um, Sense of cruise needs to be taken out. Get down there, get over there, Guiana. We go to war these guys too. Oh, they're already in the open, so we don't want to go to war them. Ah. Rex Kumaskariat, Scandinavian. Scandinavian. That. I guess we got some growth going. That's always good to have. Alright, so you guys are doing okay. Are you in there yet? Come on. Let's get going. Bolivia is waiting for us. Taking out these guys is going to take forever, though. My god. That's good. Go in. Nice. That's fine. We don't care. Yeah, a little bit of lag, but it's alright. They'll get theirs. Yes, they will. Can you go in and just kill them off? That'd be fantastic. Come on. My god, you guys take so long to get over there. Ridiculous. Um... Cool.
and come on down to here. That'd be fine. Contacting the America Deu American Deutsche Bund. Let's go to war with America soon. Second battle for the Atlantic. In the first round against Americans, the battle for the Atlantic was one of the most potent victories, at least it was for a time. We were able to dominate their shipping lanes, and with the firepower of the U-boats and raiding ships, we sent thousands of tons of Allied cargo to the bottom of the ocean, unfortunately. We ended up overplaying our hand a bit too much, and the U.S.N. was able to strike back, and we began to suffer significant losses, including our state-of-the-art ship, the Bismarck. Well, once again, do battle above and beneath the Atlantic, but we'll have learned our lessons from the past, and this time, it will be our turn to decimate their naval forces. Destroy for air bases. Without a place to take off from, to land, and to refuel, an air fleet is nothing better than a pile of scrap metal part left out to rust. Furthermore, an air fleet whose only air base is out of range of the prime combat zones is equally worthless. For assault on the north, we must prioritize knocking out of the OFN's furthest deployed airfield to allow us to land on the shores without suffering massive casualties from bombers and strafing runs. Their principal facilities are in Iceland and the Newfoundland region of Canada. These will be taken out first, and their remains will be later used to create air bases for our own airplane designs. I might do some of this off screen as well, just uh, get things, make sure we're rolling. Uh, crush Central America. The Central American region is absolutely infested with small, pathetic nations that will easily be trampled under boots and be ground to dust. In fact, Field Marshal Rammer has suggested, without a hint of humor, we could engage all of them with only one army and have enough strength remaining to blitz through Mexico. Perhaps he's just boasting, but his words do strike at the core truth of the matter. These nations are all weaklings, unfit to survive or even be recognized as true enemies by the Reich. They're merely speed bombs and nothing more. Whatever. Uh, we only eliminate the bare minimum of them needed to reach our ultimate strategic target of Mexico or take our time in cleansing the region is, of, of course, up to the fierce prerogative. But the militaries are confident in their ability to deal with any and all threats among the slop. The Ophelons a peon. Oh, definitely good to war these guys. Unsurprising given the fact that its leader is a dominant of either American continent, the Ophelons have their own toadies in South America. Guiana and Suriname, luckily for us, the Ophelons has not made much of an effort to support these small, pitifully ragtag states over the years, and it's positively ripe for the taking. The fun of breaking the will serve as an excellent warm-up as we prepare for more conquests in the Americas in Operation Maximilian. Despite it being known for being under Spanish rule for most of its history, a German did indeed once rule over the land of Mexico, Emperor Maximilian of Mexico. Unfortunately, he only reigned a short bit of time before the ungrateful Kurs overthrew him and murdered him, ending a line of German monarchs in the Americas prematurely. Oh, how differently things might have gone for us in the First World War had Mexico stood up together with us, but perhaps that was for the best. For out of our defeat rose the triumph of the will of National Socialism, still for the best or not. We cannot overlook the insult to all Germans, to all Germans that, that was pe perpetrated in that day and dry and arid land, and we shall have her due recompense now. German blood will once again flow through the veins of the ruler of Mexico. Goring's Caribbean vacation. The fear has never stepped foot in the Caribbean island off the coast of the Americas, but he has heard from the trusted sources that they are a land that would be somewhat excellent for building a personal summer resort once conquered. Aside from the personal worth of the Fuhrer, these islands would make an excellent naval and air bases for the inevitable invasion of the mainland. There are even some nations among the numerous islands that would even be worth reaching out to, if only to make securing the region all that much easier. And talks to the Dominicans. Dominica has the Fuhrer been told by his aides a long and troubled history, which may ex help explain why it's now under government that is commonly referred to as following the principles of fascism. While some of them, the Reich's foreign officer, are hesitant to apply such a prestigious label to an island state run by lesser races, has conceded that the government model bears similarities at least to the Reich's. Gordon does not really understand, nor is he interested in finding out the tenets of the Dominican leader's philosophies, but such things are deals, are trivial matters in the end. Perhaps, believe the Fuhrer, this Raphael Trujillo will recognize this as ideological, although thankfully for us not genetic, Ken. A meeting with a boon. Yet another meeting Gordon had been pressured into by Shona and Rema, yet another excuse for a lousy Fuhrer to sit in a comfy chair and to little with sums and only half listen to what his guests had to say. In came a group of four men who looked far more suited in overalls and straw hats than the suits they were wearing. As soon as they laid eyes on Goring, they made the faces of children in a candy shop or men facing the reckoning with God. Heck, they were probably resisting the temptation and knew on the floor and grovel. Their leader, Robert Williams, said, Never see my chair. It is the greatest honor of our lives to meet you. Goring nonchalantly flicked the cigarette ash on his desk. It was not paying the strange men such much attention. Oh, yes, yes, of course. It's my pleasure. The two military men beside Goring gave him a look that was more exasperated than angry, as they were used to and perfectly happy with their supposed leader's apathy and numbness by this point. Rammer got straight to the business. Gentlemen, you have certain paramilitary organizations who might be willing to support a cause against your degenerate government, correct? Yes, sir, replied the second command, Gordon Moore. The Christian Patriots Defense League is at your disposal. Sure, excellent. Let us discuss some plans we have for the assassination of the U.S. President, said Raymer, who was effectively controlling the meeting by now. These are some of the most eccentric men any of the three Germans had ever seen, but there was no harm in getting them to do some dirty work for the Reich if they were so eager to help. At the end of the meeting, Moore humbly asked, My sure, if I may take one small request of you, I have a letter from one of our fellow sympathizers, Father Charles Coughlin, that has asked me to I give you to read. It would be another wonderful honor. 
Of course, reply to Distant Goring, almost forgetting to reach out and take the letter. I'll gladly read it. And it goes into the trash. Let it be done. A second gunpowder plot, huh? Screw it, why not? The OFAN's. OAFON's? OFN's peon. And our allies have actually decided to attack uh, in northern uh, Colombia. Or, so, good job for you guys. I was trying to smash through Argentina pretty quickly, but uh, I didn't realize that there was a front here, too. Whoops. Oh, well. I'd like to go to Buenos Aires someday. Huh. That'd be kind of cool. I heard Argentinian economy is not doing so well. Then again, I have no money myself, so. Um, money's hard to buy. Here, go here. And you'll take some time to go through there. That's alright, though. VRWI, no one's any concerns, and that's what we thought. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Concepcion de Uruguay. Uh, that one's next. There you go. A lucky failure. A plot to assassinate the American president has unfortunately failed due to a blunder in the execution of the plan. Um, on the bright side, however, our involvement in the plot has not been discovered. Our diplomatic attaché in London has received a strongly worded letter from his American counterpart, but no actual measure followed. This is more than enough proof that the American counterpart won't attempt anything against us, at least for now. What a relief. Oh, wait. Wasn't Suriname and Guyana in the OFN? Huh. Well, then. Oh, well. Air power needs so much. Um, I'm going to actually have you guys come over here first. And since we're waiting anyways... Um, 161 days. Caribbean. Uh, we, uh, you know what? We can probably launch a quick invasion. A Panama from here. Uh, not like that. Like that, that would be better. I'll take that out. Guys, you're gonna need a port of some sort to do that. Start working through here quickly. Go ahead and move over. These guys are doing very well. I'm very surprised how well they're doing. Argentina could be doing way better though. Come on, get going, guys. We don't. Have, we literally have no time. War Chile, why not? Second battle for the Atlantic. Um, Operation Icarus. Good War with America, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic. Uh, Holiday in the Sun, Operation Hydra. Talks to the Dominicans, the Cuban question. Cuba's had a trouble past recently. Uh, with his recent revolution against the Bastista and the installment or statement of the fierce anti fascism of populist Fidel Castro, it has had an ideology shift rapidly. But for us, there's one golden strategic advantage a large landing pad to the U.S. Such an island out of control would be a massive boon for a war effort. Um, problem is, Castro has been, always been fiercely independent or fiercely against German ideology for years now and has stayed quite firmly under the American wing. But everyone can be swayed with enough charisma, right? Goran shall simply message Castro himself to see if a deal where Cuba goes under a wing can be arranged. Will it ever refute the Fuhrer? That's a good question. Then come on down, 18 billion, growth one. Oh, I hope it's going back up. Holiday in the sun. There are a great conference tables today covered not by map of the Great Reich's eastern border, but the west. The Fuhrer leaned over uh, to the canvas as prodigious bulk blocking out of the overhead light like an eclipse over the western hemisphere. His finger just between the two largest blocks on the map before he leaned back again with a wobble, satisfied, and took yet another sip from his glass. That's where we'll find our allies. The finger, finger to his right stared down the bridge of his nose through his reading glasses, doing his best to ignore the wine stain that formed a new landmass in the Atlantic. Hating Cuba, showing his lips curled upwards into a sneer. Forgive me, mind fear, but while they would provide excellent staging points or posts for further operations, their cooperation is unnecessary. I, ex I expect 
and I expect not forthcoming to notify. Then while their intentions would be kind of productive in excess. I have a little faith, Ferdinand. I am told the Haitian regime has taken current inspiration from national socialism. No doubt they'll be overjoyed for assistance against America and the Dominica. Schooner resisted the urge to remind Goring that Dominica was a completely different place to the Dominican Republic. But the amount of wine the Führer has consumed is unlikely that he would understand. And Castro, that man is an Arctic communist. If he chose to work with us, he'd rather be a fool or a backstabber. Goring seemed to deliberately ignore him. In order to begin writing a letter of a wobbling hand, you have no head for diplomacy, Ferdinand. Certainly, we could invade all the Caribbean, but a little goodwill goes a long way. Shuna uh, simmered on the inside. On some days, he was sure that Fear only played these little games with spite him and the other militaries, a way of feeling in control once again, but on the other days, the almost insanity of the man seemed genu genuine. So be it, though, he thought. Let the Fear dream of being a diplomat. He would begin drawing up the backup plans. Why am I still taking orders from this fool? Because he pays your paycheck. After the embarrassing failure when either Haiti or Cuba over to our side, would now fall upon the warriors of the right to directly take control over the Caribbean islands, if we stand, still stand, or still hope, to make them useful in our plan against the United States. This also involved destroying the remnants of a former West Indies Federation, and which itself was a part of the OFN, island by island, still, this should prove no challenge to our veteran marines, will no doubt be called to tell us of the victories after our only mere hours. This will strengthen our special forces, of course. 21 billion, huh? It's not cheap running a navy, man. But it certainly is worth it. Kelly, yes, please. Semi modern entity equipment, yes, please. Be nice. Oh, we're running out of resources too. Oh, good God. Someone capitulate, I hope. Ah, the Argentine Republic is ours. And Colombia too, at the same time. Oh. Let's have a Walton Gross Colombine. Colombine. On Toysen. Boyer land looking pretty nice and thick the way we like them. Oh, good God. This is disgusting. This is ungodly disgusting. Remind me you never go to Chile. Good Lord. And of course, crush Central America too. Island hopping, Operation Hydra. Given the United States a relatively incompetent, competent military, we cannot afford to lay out all of our eggs in one basket during our main invasion. Were we to only concentrate on one area of the coast, they could swamp us into the air support and fire until we were driven back into the sea or be killed. That is where Operation Hydra comes in. This ingenious solution devised by Admiral Putcomer calls for a multi pronged invasion along the entire U.S. eastern seaboard to keep them off balance and overextended. Will we also be able to capture multiple cities at once and hopefully force a quick surrender all the quicker? Go and do that one. Anyways, why not? Good. A letter to Fidel Castro. The first secretary of Fidel Castro of Cuba. I wish you and your nation good will. Um, Cuba has remained a mostly isolated in land since its revolution against the tyrant Batista, remaining under the American hegemony, hopefully against its own interests. Your leadership has brought for equality and prosperity, and there exists a great admiration for the people of Cuba and Germany for their resilience against tyranny. Us Germans can relate, after all, our way of governing was not a revolution in itself. I read to you our friendship in these hard times, whilst Cuba is strong and proud, and the event of conflict between the Reich and the USA at risks being trampled between them. Whether the Reich can offer protection in these circumstances, for it is the right of the Reich, might of the Reich, 
that are eventually prevail. To this end, it is my decision to offer you the honor of membership in the Einheit's Pact and all the benefits associated with it. Cuban independence will be guaranteed under the auspices of the Reich. While I understand that you commonly spout anti-fascist ideals in speeches, you surely appreciate that those troubled times are hardly fit for zealots of any belief system. As always, practicality should win out against dogma. I eagerly wait your response. Best wishes, Fuhrer Hermann Goring. Surely they understand real politique, right? Right? Right. We need the Navy out here, too. There you go. I find your bad faith disturbing. If you're Herman Goring, you are a liar and a fool if you think you gain my trust through honored words. As much as it pains me to say it, but I'd rather ally Batista than even consider further relations with you. I'm going to spit upon your attempts to ingratiate yourself with us. The Cuba that the German people allegedly admire does not exist, but is viewed through the Reich's corrupt and blackened lens. You take me for an idiot if you think I trust in your assurances. For a second, and I have no doubt that as soon as the German boot steps foot on Cuba, I swear we'll begin the process of colonization. We now step back under the European thumb for the freedom of all Cubans against inequality and fascism, and the world is our, our only true goal. Send your Marines to Cuba and I will ensure that I drown in the ocean myself. I wish you an early death. Fidel Castro. Stupid cow, uh, communists. Oh. Well then. Oh, I should have gone already. I should have gone already too. There you go. Well, that's the case. It takes some time to get over there, but all right. And the William Maximilian, Icarus as well. At long last, the times come for a major direct assault upon the United States to commence in earnest. We should finally get rid of the pathetic and cowardly Dominicans and Cubans at the same time to give us even more launching pads. Oh, the Cuban Netherlands, finally, huh? Field Marshal Raymond will handle the field operations from here on, while the Rex Marshal Shona coordinates the overall campaign from the fear bunker. Has been a battle decades in the making, even for the beginning. Hitler knew that the United States would make an excellent partner, if not for its puppeteering, but the Jewish world order that sought to keep all pure nations down. Looking how far it sunk into that time of the so-called civil rights movement and anti-fascist pawns in the White House, and one can see how true the late fears words are, or were. Well, one thing is for certain, the Jews will not be allowed to control that nation for much longer. Good. Might makes right, my friends. Liberia, huh? Screw it. You guys are going to do the Peru thing here. You guys come to Ecuador to do that too. Let me redo this real quick. My apologies. Yes, it's looking better though. I'll say that for sure.
Bros, do you want to like move or something? It's almost Christmas Day. Ah, Chile's gone. Good. Oh, have we launched? Where are you guys at? Ecuador, I don't think quite there yet. Trinidad and Tobago. Honestly, just call them all in. Our allies might actually enable invade them and do all the work for us, so we'll see about that. Um, we got 112 days, which is still not bad technically. But of course it could be better. So go figure. Oh, Anne's gonna like super hard right now. But with that in mind. I might be able to do more of this just off screen, so um, I think I'll finish up a lot of these guys off screen unless there's some more events to read as uh, we try to kill each other off. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, as we get take out America in the next episode, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else we can do. Hopefully, take out the Jewish state of America. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.